uh, it was an accidental clash of heads and uh, the referees and the officials cage side were able to see that and they turned what was looking like a knockout win for Bobby Green into a no contest. Let's get Jared's side of the story now. Say hello to him. Oh, wow. Look at this setup, Jared Gordon. This is nice. What do you got, a podcast or something? Oh, I tried. We're trying. <laughs> okay. It looks nice. It looks professional. Uh, I don't know if the mic is working, but it looks good. No, it's not right now. It just looks cool. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Um, well, thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming on. First and foremost, how are you feeling? I'm all right. Um, you know, I have some, I had a, an abrasion on my eye, but it's healing. It feels a lot better. Uh, and I was like mildly concussed, unfortunately. I haven't had a concussion in years, at least from what I know. Um, but I'm all right. I got a CT scan. I was cleared. I think I'm following up with the neurologist and, you know, I'm doing recovery stuff. So I'm okay, though. Uh, do you remember anything from Saturday night? In other words, when you guys clashed heads and then the, the yeah. subsequent, you know, few seconds, what do you remember from all of that? Yeah, I remember. I mean, I remember all of a sudden I was, I was on my back and I was fighting off my back uh, and then the fight ended. Um you know, I didn't know that it was a headbutt, obviously, at first. I thought, you know, obviously, I knew I got hit with something. And when the fight ended, I was like, what the hell happened? And and my coach was like, oh, it was, looks like it was a headbutt. And then when they showed the replay, it was pretty clear that he uh, <laughs> led with his head completely and, you know, called me around right my temple, uh, which is really unfortunate. I thought I was doing really well in the fight and uh, I was looking good, felt great. Um, unfortunately, Keith, you know, didn't have the angle, I guess, to see that it was a headbutt at first. Because um, I'm sure he, if he did, he would have stopped it earlier, you know, so I didn't have to take those extra shots. Right. Uh, but, you know... There's nothing I can really say. It happened the way it happened, and it sucks a lot. I am kind of like, it's a little weird how Bobby is talking about it after the fact. Like, oh, I busted his ass. Like, you clearly headbutted me, and then you, I mean, I don't know if he knew that either at the time, that he that his head landed on, on mine, and then he followed up. Um but you know, I don't blame him. I don't. I don't want to say that he knew and then followed up with shots because then I'm putting words in his mouth, um, or you know, making him look like a, look like a bad guy because I don't think he, you know, at heart is a bad guy. Um, it sucks the way it happened for both of us. You know, he was complaining about his money. What about my money between my last fight and this fight? Yeah, you know, I'm out over six figures. So. Um, sucks a lot. And, you know, it's not like I was losing both of these fights. I clearly won the Patty fight and, and I thought I was winning this one, you know? Um, so, you know, just another bump in my road, which is, seems to be the common theme in my life. So I'll just do what I always do and come back better. But I mean, there's nothing I can say or do, unfortunately. I saw you posted a statement uh, after he was on the show on Monday about some of the things that he said, and I'm wondering if you were surprised by the sentiment because it seemed like in the cage it was all love, and then on Monday it seemed like he was kind of questioning your heart and questioning, you know, your yeah, world I mean, to continue. He's like, man, the fuck up. I yeah. mean, is she talking? Is she talking to me, or or is she talking to like the ref or something? Because man, the fuck up. Was you headbutt me, so I'm on my back fighting. And I didn't know what was happening. I just was, you know, instinctually fighting. Um, and it was completely out of my control. It's not my fault that we have instant replay. It's not my fault that the refs decided to, you know, the judges and officials decided to over, overturn it to a no contest. It should never have been, it should have been automatic, no contest. And as a matter of fact, like some people might have called it a DQ, you know, um, that might be stretching a little bit, but 
you know, it was like he rammed me with his head. It wasn't like we, like, we're moving in a sequence and, like, his head, like, glanced my temple. Like, he rammed me like a bowl right in the side of my head. So, I mean, I don't, I, like I said, I don't want to say that it was intentional. Um, because I don't think, obviously, he didn't want the fight to end that way. He wanted to win and get his other check, right? And so does everyone. So, I'm not going to sit here and say it was intentional. But, like, don't tell me to man up because it's out of my hands. It's not my fault you did that. And it's it's not my fault that the rules are the, w- the way the rules are and are just. And I got a no contest. We got a no contest because something illegal happened. Um, so, that was, you know, it was really strange. And, you know, um, but I want to, you know, I would love to get back in there with him. Um, and then we could just settle it once and for all. It just seems like a common thing lately. My last couple of opponents have been, you know, rematches. Like I, this is, I had one rematch as an amateur. And, oh, I had one, I, I fought one kid as an amateur and I rematched him as, as a pro. And I won the rematch. Uh, and I did have, th- I did fight one kid three times as an amateur. I beat him two out of three. So like, it, it's been a long time though, since I've had these kind of, uh, occurrences happen. So, uh, but you know, I think it's, it's still kind of working out in my favor. I feel like the fans are with me, uh, and I'm getting recognition, even though, you know, luckily for me, I'm not relying on fighting for money. So, you know, like I'm salty over the money, but I'm not like dying over it. Uh, yes, it would be nice to have that extra money, obviously, but, um, it blows me away though. Like a, a situation, like I get the Patty one, even though the whole world thought you won that fight, but ultimately, all right, the judges didn't score it, fine. Situation like this, where there's no winner, where it's, you know, a clash of heads, you guys deserve your money, man. You guys deserve your money. Yeah. I, I don't want to harp on this stuff. You know, people get mad at me for yeah. doing it, but like, it's crazy to me. This was not your fault. This was not his fault, in my opinion. You fought your asses off. Who can say, like... You know, they, they're they making like $15 million a show here from ESPN at the Apex. They've got no expenses. I don't know what you're making. I don't know. What, they can afford to pay you guys your win. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. Have you tried to get it? You know what? Like, after the, after the last one, and I'm just like, not, I don't want to say I'm at my wit's end, but I'm kind of just letting it go. I get it. Letting it fall as they're supposed to. Um, I mean, everything in my life is just like, I got to get through s- some hurdles to get to the other side and see the bigger picture. So that's all I'm waiting for is to see what happens down the line. And I'm sure it'll, it will all work out in my favor, you know, as long as I do the right thing. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I want to rematch Bobby. I want to rematch Patty. Um, which one do you want more now? Like if you, if you had your choice, is like, Bobby is a better fighter than Patty, I think. So when I beat him, I was on my way to beating him in the last one. Then it's like, am I going to go backwards, fight Patty, Patty the Flabby, who's like just had ankle surgery, is saying he doesn't know when he's going to come back. He's probably going to blow up to some enormous weight. Uh, And then what, he's going to come fight me, who's been active. I've been active, you know. And I, I'm going to stay active. You know, I'm going to get cleared and get back in there as soon as possible. So, um, you know, as long as I'm healthy and everything is, is copacetic. Like, so, I mean, like, the only way it makes sense for me is if they give me some, like, big spot, which I doubt they'll do because it's not worthy of a really big spot, I don't think, a rematch between me and him. Um, and I don't think they're fighting in Liverpool. It's not worthy of a London main uh main event or co-main because there's so many guys from over there that deserve it more than him there's so many guys from the uk that deserve it more than patty so that's not going to happen and it's not worthy of a main event here obviously so unless he comes back and wins one or something and then you know i fight and win and then we you know meet down the line so i mean but you know he's just he's being salty. 
He obviously he wants to fight me again because he keeps talking. He's talking about me from his hospital bed. What was that? What was yeah. your reaction when you saw that video of him from the? I hospital? was laughing. It's like if you really thought you won, bro. You just you're in the recovery room of the hospital. You just had ankle surgery, and the first words that you're muttering are Jared Gordon. So it's like I'm clearly living in your head, and he's saying, "Oh, I beat you on my worst day, I, and and I beat you on your best." My ankle. I hurt my ankle so badly in the Grant Dawson fight. I went into the Leo Santos fight and the Patty fight. I couldn't even jump on one foot. So I went in there injured already, and I couldn't walk for for weeks after our fight also. So you have, but I understand like you're, where you're coming from. You're injured. You know, apparently he had like a really big surgery. It was really bad. Uh, but ankles take a long time to heal because we're constantly on them. Right. And they're constantly, you know, there's no, you can't rest it because you're walking. So, um, but I don't know. I thought it was funny. And I'm obviously, I, deep down inside, he knows I won. Because if he, thought he, if he thought he won, he would just move on. And he wouldn't be talking about me as he's all doped up on morphine in the recovery room after surgery. I would never be talking about you if I thought, I won that fight. I would want to just move on to the next one, and that's it. But he knows the deal. So, mm. um, so you you mentioned the DQ thing with the Bobby fight. Do you think there's a chance he did this on purpose? Because my understanding is, for it to be a DQ, it would be intentional, right? Yeah, no, I'm not going to sit here and say that Bobby did okay. that on purpose. No, I'm not going to say that. Um, it was a flagrant like move, though. Right. I mean, I get it. He said he was going in for the elbow, and it kind of did look like he was. But, like, if you're going to elbow, then your elbow should be before your head. Like, he was literally looking at the floor coming in head first. So it was kind of just like – I mean, I get it also. South pole versus right. You know, it happens all the time. Three, four weeks before the fight, I was – you know, I was scoring south pole. I was getting ready for Bobby, and I got cut on the side of my head. No. Mm. I saw that, yeah. Second, How many yeah, stitches? I got twenty stitches on the side of my head, which Jeez. is an old it was an old cut because I, I opened up when I fought Joe Selecki in the same spot and then it reopened. So I'm like sitting on the side, there's one more round left, and I'm like, Well, it's all the way up here on the side of my head. I'll just finish you know, they just put some Vaseline on it and I just was gonna finish the last round. Three minutes later, I'm sparring a different guy and I get headbutt here. Oh and I got like, 15 stitches on this side on, above my eye. It was just crazy coincidence. I haven't been cut in, I don't know, six years in, in training. And people were like, oh, why don't you, should you wear a headgear? When I wear headgear, I feel like I'm getting battered more because the target's bigger mm. and I'm getting, I'm taking more shots. So yeah, it prevents cuts and stuff. Um, but I feel like my head hurts more when I'm done sparring with the headgear because, you know, this is such a bigger target. And yeah. I'm, you're getting so much more. So, yeah, like I could have been wearing a headgear, but I haven't been cutting years. And I spar without a headgear all the time. So that's what we do. And no, like, no, only like maybe one out of 50, 60 guys in my gym are wearing a headgear. And that's probably because they're cut already or have an old cut that they're trying to protect. So, you know, and you can't wrestle as well and shoot and grapple. So um, I wasn't wearing them. But I get it. Headbutts happen all the time. It's not the first time that I've been headbutt, obviously. Um, when I fought Bill Algio, the night that I got signed to UFC, I headbutt the shit out of him. And I cut his eye wide open. So, and he was, fight, he, was, he was fighting South Pole that night. And I was righty. And I headbutt him. And his eye opened wide open, and that was like probably a de, you know a deterrent in the fight for him. So, um, you know, it happens, but shit, it's fighting. Right? I saw this crazy thing that they did because they wanted to see if you had any cuts around your eyes or in your eyes, and they put this like, eye, yeah. yeah, like what is this? I've never seen this before, like this neon. Thing. Yeah, so they put like a like a dye in your eye, and then they hold a black light over it. To see if there's any abrasion, I guess the the dye goes into the abrasion and it shows on your eyeball. Oh my gosh! Uh, Does that hurt? It burned, and at that point, it was burning a lot because I had abrasions in both of my eyes. Oh my god! Uh, but it feels a lot better now. They gave me medicine, and 
ster- like a like a steroid and like a you know anti-inflammatory and some antibiotics so I don't get infected. But uh, I'm healing up and I, I got a workout in today. Now it's training. Like I was just doing cardio and lifting. Uh, I felt good. I've been in the hyperbaric chamber trying to recover from this mild concussion. Uh, so life of a fighter, right? Yeah. I saw you, uh, actually, I was I was in Vegas over the weekend as well for the Tank Garcia fight, and I was walking the strip, and I saw right outside of the, uh, in front of the Bellagio, they had this guy who had this thing where he had like a, a like a, a bar. Pull bar. Yeah, the pull yeah, yeah. bar, and and he has this sign, like, he give you a hundred bucks if you can hang on for a hundred seconds, yeah. and I saw like, I must have seen like 10, 15 people try, all of them failed, and then I saw you try, and you yeah. failed too, is that hard? It is really hard. Um, I thought I could have done it. If well, I'm there's no ball bearing, so the bar spins. Ah. So, pull a bar. so I was like, can I do a mixed grip? Because then yeah. it doesn't spin. He's like, no. Nah. Ah. So there's like, it's kind of like a, like a trick setup. If you're really good, I guess, or you have to like apparently keep your wrist bent over the top. Because once you get here, the bar is spinning and you just lose. Uh, so going well, there again, like 20 seconds. There's, I got 52 seconds. Um, but you have to get 70 to get your money back. It was 10 bucks and a hundred seconds, I think, or something. Yeah. hundred. To get a hundred bucks. Um, really hard, but it was fun. <laughs> 10 bucks was worth it. Has anyone done it? Like, did you see anyone do it? I he said six people did it that day. I don't believe him. Yeah. Was this after the fight or before the fight? That was after. That was uh, that was the next day. Oh, the next Sunday. day. So you were concussed and you made it to fifty seconds. I was concussed. I made it fifty seconds. Yeah. How do you not let this stuff get to you? Like the patty thing, this thing, like you know, the woe is oh, me. It gets, you, it gets you. I mean, yeah. So I'll have like you know, I'll act like a sore loser for a couple of days. I'll kick some shit, throw some shit. Uh, I'll cry about it and bitch to my friends and family and my wife. And then I'm like, all right, <laughs> what am I going to do? You know, quit or so I just, I mean, there's nothing. Listen, like I truly believe that the truth will always come to light. You know, they say I, I was in jail and there was a, there was a CO that said, um, what doesn't come out in the wash comes out in the rinse. He always said this shit. Don't come out in the wash, comes out in the rinse. And I truly believe it, man. You know, it might not be shown now, but eventually whatever it is will come to light, you know? So, uh, but, you know, sometimes it takes six months, a year for things to play out and, and for you to see the silver lining. So that's all I can do, man. I just, I like, I have to come to terms that this is the way, first of all, this is the way fighting is in general. This is the way life is for most people. There's always hardships. Uh, but for me, it's just always going to be this way. There's no way around it. For me. I'm always going to have, you know, up, up and down, <laughs> up, up, up and down. It's not just like a. When's the last, shot. when's the last time you had a, an extreme high. I mean, like, you know, these last couple months have been good, even though the patty thing happened. You know, my my recognition has skyrocketed. My my you know following has quadrupled. Um, you know, I won the Leo Santos fight right before that. Things have been good, man. You know, I have a great family. I have everything I need. I own a home. I own a, everything that you could possibly need or want. I have. So, like, things aren't – things are great for me. Uh, I just want the icing on the cake, mm. you know. And as an athlete competitor, I want to win. Um, and these last two ones are, like, out of my control. It's not like I went out there and fought shitty or, you know – was losing the, the whole way and then I got no con. So like if I was losing the whole way and then I got a no contest, I was just shutting them up. You know? mm. 
but that wasn't the case. I think it was like maybe some of some of I was looking the best I ever looked. I felt the best I ever felt. Great camp. I was felt great backstage. Went in there. I was landing big shots against a boxer, you know, and I'm not quote unquote a boxer. So I mean, like I think I know I'm showing improvements. I know I'm getting better every fight. So what more can I really ask for except my win bonus and the wins on my record? You know, I should be three and zero on this contract, but I'm one one and one. Yeah. So that's what sucks. Yeah. Because who knows? Like, you know, that affects my renegotiation uh, capability and power. You know. But this is the way uh, God wanted it for me. So I just got to roll the punches, figuratively and literally. Uh, I saw you tweet about uh, Stefan Bonner. Um, hor- horrible news. You know, we, we obviously knew it was a tragedy when he passed away, and we found out it was an overdose uh, due to uh, fentanyl. Um, yeah. This is, this is I mean, this is a huge problem in the world, in this country, and um, obviously something that is near and dear to your heart and you offered any support for anyone. Do people actually take you up on this when you are? Oh, my God. Yeah? I'm going to show you my... The DM is absolutely ridiculous. Is is that is that overwhelming? It's overwhelming, especially like you know. I just came off a big yeah. I had a fight week. Uh, my DMs explode already. Yeah. But then I, you know, when I post things like that or anything related to addiction or recovery, it just goes nuts. And I actually have like a someone that helps me go through my DMs. Oh wow. Um, yeah, it's just nonstop, never-ending battle. Um, and yeah, like our country, our neighborhoods, our schools, middle schools, high schools are like under siege with it. I know people, you know, I see and hear people constantly dying. Uh, and it's worse than it was when I was using, like I was shooting heroin. Heroin is like nostalgic now. That was like a thing of the past. Like people, you're not getting, there's no, no one's getting heroin anymore. It's just fentanyl made in like a bathtub or some shit. People so like, are people getting fentanyl or, or are they thinking it's something else? And it's I don't know. like, so some people will buy pills that they think are painkillers, but they're pressed with fentanyl. But people now just are looking for fe- like to buy fentanyl. But isn't that and lethal? They, uh, can, can anyone like stomach that? Well, if you have a, a big, you know, if you have a, sh- a tolerance to opiates. Yeah. <clears throat> Or if you've done fentanyl already, then you'll you'll build a tolerance and and they know like and they call it Fetty. So they're just looking to buy fentanyl. They know like it used to be like a thing that they hit. Like, oh yeah, I have heroin, but it's really laced with fentanyl. Now it's like, yeah, I got fentanyl. Jeez. And people are just going to buy fentanyl. So have you ever tried it? Uh, I've done real fentanyl, like from an actual pharmacy or you know, I've had surgery where they've given me fentanyl pre-op, you know, going into surgery. Right. But I never willingly have done fentanyl. When I was getting high, I was still heroin. But that was, you know, seven and a half years ago. Um, and, like, I know what heroin tastes and looks like. So, um, Why are they lacing it with this? Like, why, why are people doing that? It's just stronger, cheaper, way cheaper. So, mm. what? I mean, you're a drug dealer. That's yeah. your main goal, right, is to make the money. Um, and they don't, it's just way more readily available now. Like it's so easy for these people to, to make it. And that's what they're, that's what they're supplying all the, the dealers with is fentanyl. So it's, it's a shame, man. Like when I think about heroin, I'm like, ah, the good old days, you know, (laughs) these kids will, these kids will never know like the heroin is kind of sad actually like they think they're like and, and it's so much worse for them it destroys your organs destroy heroin you can do heroin and it would last you eight 10 12 hours until you got like dope sick again and had to and had to get high again fentanyl i hear is every it's such a fast acting and it's in and out of your system so fast every 45 minutes you got to use otherwise you're sick again so it's a non stop. That's why it's cheap and so readily available is because this just they gotta keep buying it and buying it and buying it. Um and it destroys your fucking organs. Your liver and your kidneys are just being 
destroy because it's synthetic fake bullshit. You know, heroin actually came from a plant. Right. Um, and obviously, you know, there's cuts and it's adulterated, but it's like, and it was like a thing that was like, oh yeah, like here's a little like, and people would give like give like share it. Motherfuckers ain't sharing fentanyl because they have to use it so much that they're like, no, no, this is all mine. It's almost like it's like I know it sounds crazy, but um, it's like sad. Like, yeah, kids will never know what. Oh, that shooting. part. I thought I thought the fentanyl part is. I mean, yeah, no, no, no. it's all very sad. It's obviously very sad, also. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and like if you're some kid, oh, like I'm on, I want to like do a painkiller and press with fentanyl, you're dead. You're dead. Oh. Um, just like Stephen Byron, who's probably looking for yeah. probably bought pills that were pressed with fentanyl. That's how Michael K. Williams died too of fentanyl. That is scary yeah. stuff. That is very That's, scary. Yeah. Well, it's a great thing that you're doing, um, allowing people, but I, I can imagine it's very it's very overwhelming as well. You're dealing with your own stuff, and uh, this is heavy-duty stuff, but uh, good on you for doing that. And uh, I hope some some better luck comes your way. To your point, though, you know, you talk about, like, I was in jail, this and that. Like, you're not in jail. You have a house. You no. have a family. Yeah. So let this be the worst things that are happening to you. But, yeah, man, you deserve... You deserve you you deserve a W here and there, um, and and you were already yeah. robbed of two of them in in the span of what four and a half months or so. So, hopefully, uh, the back end of the year is much kinder to you, Jared. Appreciate you coming on, and appreciate yeah, I think you. It will be. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Ariel. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, and, and thanks for reaching. And I thought I thought we were beefing there on Monday. I was like, oh shit, I don't want to piss no, off Jared. No, 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 no. I was just curious. No, that was. Yeah, if anyone needs help, reach out to me. I'm here. Just hit me up, DMs, whatever, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, if I see your message, I will respond. So thank you. Thanks, Jared. All the best. All right, Ariel. Have a good one. There he is, Jared Gordon. <clears throat> Great message at the end there.